So during elections, our country was treated to a lot of drama in churches. Our current uh, president was going from one church to another church, and he managed to convince us that uh, he's one of us. We saw him sing songs in the churches. We saw him worship. We saw him lift up his hands. We saw him dance, and we elected him. And uh, on election, I remember particularly one lady with a church. Uh, she's called who? Teresia Wairimu, saying, We have won. The church has won. And the church celebrated. Now, things have not worked according to what the church expected. Of course, I preached a message and I said the person who will be elected will be a Kenyan with Kenyan blood running through him, will be just as corrupt as the rest, will not care about anything that happens to Mwanainji. What the Lord never showed me is that he'll steal money from you through Sha, through, is it called she, Sha, she? The Lord never showed me that he'll steal money from you, build houses, sell. I don't know why he'll take that money after he has built houses. But I knew this country will suffer because of the things that we were doing at that time. Because there is no time that God chooses a leader for any country. And it's high time that our country knows this. We should not start blaming God that he chose a wrong leader for us. No. God has given us the wisdom, the authority, the power to be guided by the Holy Spirit to make the right choices. So, we played in the hands of Satan and we claimed that that was the work of God. We put a man in the office. We say, our prayers has put this man in the office. In fact, there are so many men of God, well-meaning men of God, who spent a lot of time at the, the state house speaking in tongues there. Saying that now one of our own is in state house. In fact, there are many men of God who continue being paid so that they can pray for the president. The level of idol worship has gone to another level in this country. Many men of God are now worshipping the presidency. Now, things have changed. There are no goodies anymore. The same people have turned to say that they prayed him in the office, they'll pray him out. I have bad news for them. They must pay their price fully. Ruto is not going anywhere until they are punished well enough. They made a mistake. They made a mistake. And this country has to learn through the mistakes that we make. The president is not going anywhere. Some of them are praying for his death. He'll continue swallowing things and leaving. He's not dying. I heard another one saying that if you look at the president, you are looking at the devil incarnate. It doesn't matter what you call him. He'll oppress you until you turn to God and worship God alone. Until we reach a time that in this country, the church will never again idol as a man. Until we reach a time that the church will vote with their brains, with their spirituality, that God comes first and we are voting because we have discernment that this is the right man we are voting for, not because we are idolizing him and looking for anything from this man. I want to read for you a scripture that we have already studied in the book of Timothy, First Timothy chapter 2, I think. I want to read to you a very good scripture here so that you can understand the mind of God concerning what's happening right now. Listen to me, church. The Bible has not authorized any man to pray the president out of office. No man. No woman. It doesn't matter how spiritual you are, you cannot pray the president out of office. It's a waste of time. You face your shame 
with boldness. We prayed and said, this is our man. Let's celebrate. This is our man. Let's face our shame with boldness and turn back to God and tell God we made a mistake. Forgive us and heal our nation. Chapter 2, verse 1. This will amaze you. This will amaze you. No. you. We have learned this. Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. Now listen to this. If any believer in Kenya wants to pray for Ruto, we should pray for Ruto to get saved. If he's not saved. Or if saved, we should pray that he lives a practically righteous life. He leads Kenya in a righteous way. Because the Bible says, righteousness exalts a country, but sin is a reproach to all people. What is going through Kenya is reproach. Everybody is crying. There is nobody who is happy. Everybody is crying. Atamurima in Arias, isn't you? Everybody is crying. Yeah? Even the people of the mountain, they have discovered that God said, don't touch the mountain. Don't touch the mountain. If you touch it, you die. So here, we need to pray for our leaders, for the president and all that are around him, so that this country may have a quiet, peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. Let's pray that God will give him wisdom so that he doesn't touch the church, say that he wants to control the church. If he touches the church, he destroys himself. Let's pray that he opens his eyes to the will and plan and purpose of God for this country. That this country may, be, may prosper. That the people of this country may live peacefully in good health with prosperity at place of work. Let's pray that people will enjoy going to the office. Because now going to the office has become burdensome. You cannot be going to work for the government. All your money is taken through very funny means. Housing levy, shisha, shisha, I don't know. It's burdensome to go to the office. Work is no longer enjoyable in this country. But what's the devil setting us up for? The devil is setting us up for a revolution that will bring bloodshed in this country. And it cannot happen. Because we have righteous men in this country who have not eaten from the table of Ruto and who can stand and worship God in truth and spirit. Amen. We have men who have refused. Some of them willingly, some of us because we didn't get a chance. But we have not eaten from that table. And we can stand and worship God in truth and spirit and stand in place for this country. Amen. Amen. This country can never go to the dogs. But whatever is happening is to place everybody under too much pressure until you go on the streets and the army kills people and this happens and there's bloodshed in this country. But we stand as a church to say it shall not be so. There's nobody who is happy. Even if you look people when people are coming from the office, you think they're coming from a funeral. Nobody's happy at all at all. You look at businessmen, you look you think that they, they have been bereaved. People never enjoy their money anymore. Taxes and taxes and taxes and then criminals and criminals and criminals. Nobody's enjoying his money in this country. Nobody's enjoying peace in this country. Nobody's enjoying anything in this country. But we need to pray for our government. Okay? Now, this is what I wanted to say. Even as we pray for the government, the government must come to a realization that we have one who is king of kings and lord of lords, who is above the government, and his name is Jesus. The Bible says here, even as we pray for them, we need to realize that for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires that all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. So we pray. We know that um, I have conviction that Ruto is saved. Our president is saved. But I pray that he needs to come to the knowledge of truth. Because if he has the knowledge of truth, there are things that he's doing to this country right now that he'll never do to this country. There are things he has allowed that he'll never allow. There are things that are happening right now, left, right, center in this country, that as a president he can stand and stop. Me, it doesn't matter to me whether Kashagwa is the VDP or not. It doesn't matter to me. Kashagwa opens his mouth and you will rather see vomit than hear Kashagwa speak. And most of his people, most of the people in the government, they talk and you rather even 
be in the toilet than hear them speak. I don't know the last time I watched television because you can't watch. It's bad news and bad news and bad news and bad news. But we have good news. We have a God who is in heaven. Amen. We are, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. For us to pray for the leaders is good. But not to pray for them to die. No. Let them lead this country righteously. Not only that, but we are praying for leaders to humble themselves to the spirit of God and to sound Bible doctrine so that they can come to the knowledge of truth. Because anyone who knows truth, then you walk in the light. Anyone who knows truth, you walk in reverence. Anyone who knows truth, you walk everything you do, you do it as unto the Lord. It's worship because truth is Christ Jesus. It is shame to hear that there are bishops and pastors and I don't know who, apostles and prophets who are now gathering to say they are praying to pray for the president out. Shame on them. Shame on them. Let them hear that prophet Morris J. Mwale says shame on them. They must be able to humble themselves, say we made a mistake, we made stupid moves, but there is still God. We can go back to the same God, a God who knows nothing impossible to pray for Ruto for good health, to pray for Ruto for long life, to pray for Ruto for understanding, for the knowledge of the truth that now is that walking in righteousness than walking in evil like what we are experiencing in our country. We live in this country. We have no other place to go to. Our children are in this country. Some of us, our parents are in this country. This is the only place we know as home. We can't go anywhere. And we know we will stand on the authority of scriptures and no one can take this country to the dogs. You are blessed. Oh Lord my God Dear friend, you may have watched this message and yet you are not born again. It's not an accident, but God's plan. All you need to do now is believe that Christ Jesus died on the cross and settled the penalty for all your sins. When you rely only on this finished work, you become the righteousness of God because all your sins are forgiven. You become a child of God with all the rights of a son. You'll never ever perish because you have eternal life, the very life of God. You're welcome to worship with us every Sunday from 10 a.m. We are located at Umoja Inako Estate along Moy Drive, directly opposite the Umoja 2 Chief's Office, Nairobi, Kenya.